Welcome back to another review. I have the B-Link BT3 Pro in for review and a couple of years ago I looked at the original uh, B-Link BT3 so I was curious to see what exactly has changed with this Windows mini PC. You can also get this in Linux as well and I am looking at the 64 gigabyte version. You can get a 32 gigabyte both of them are running with four gigabytes of RAM. So just to look at the spec, we have dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth built in, the four gig of RAM and the Z8350 processor, which is a slight upgrade over the original BT3. Although as we get onto the test later on, it's not a massive update. There's two HDMI cables included, a short one and a long one, 28 and 80 centimeters respectively the idea with that is the short one can go if you're VESA mounting it behind the monitor there's your 12 volt power supply and you get just a very basic guide giving you the setup and the ports and uh, the included items and how to attach the mounting plate to the bottom of the unit there is a note here about the activation feature I haven't seen any problems on the B-Link boxes that I've looked at and this just activated itself no problems They've gone for a slightly different look on the casing. It's all plastic, but they've got quite a big heat sink in there. And they've embossed some of the details on the top. Just looks a little bit more interesting than the original. There's your SD slot. Those two slots that are above it are for ventilation. You have two USB 2 ports. The red button is your power next to the input for the adapter. The blue port's your USB 3, HDMI out. There's your Ethernet port. The headphone and microphone it's a dual port and there is a reset button there as well we also have a VGA on the side and that's something which is different from the original so you can run two monitors on this but it also gives you compatibility with the VGA if you need it that's the dot there is where the LED comes on the power LED and you have a bit of ventilation on the underside and these are your mounts for the uh, screws which I can show you they give you six there's um, one spare for each so you can just attach that if you want to you can also wall mount this you might wonder why you'd want to do that but I had a look on the B-Link site I mean they say you can wall mount it as well so that's a possibility they've changed this from the original mount which was plastic so they've now gone for this uh, metal one so none of the ports are obscured and it's raised up enough so that the feet uh, hold it stably as well there's enough clearance there so that it will fit properly now when you power it on you just get a discrete blue led come on just to let you know that the unit is powered and it's fairly quick to boot up but you'll have to go through the traditional uh, windows setup procedure which you should be quite familiar with now if you've used uh, other windows pcs so you'll have to put some of your details in there you can also connect up to the wi-fi you don't have to have a microsoft account but you will get extra uh, services if you do sign up with one so if you have an outlook account or something like that you can sign in it remember your contacts and things like that and this is the storage that we have out of the box i haven't done anything to this there's no installations on it there was just a few basic updates not the full creators update and we'll just look at the system specs here just to show you now this activated absolutely no problems as soon as i connected it to the internet i didn't have to put any keys in at all and it should do that with most of these oem machines so they've already got volume licensing arrangement with microsoft you can see at the bottom it has the activation so no issues as far as that goes and they should never have a problem with that and even if you reinstall and scrub everything it should still be able to activate as well just to look through some of the basic hardware that's included now this is a quad core processor but it is an atom which is at the lowest end of the scale of the intel offerings you also have your normal other items which are included such as the bluetooth it's wi-fi built in dual band so everything's um pretty much as you'd expect there's not much difference between this and the original version it is worth using the disk cleanup facility though if you do do updates because it will remember the previous version of windows and that can eat up quite a bit of space storage space but as we've got the 64 we're fairly okay for storage space on this and i didn't have any issues updating some nice new features in the more recent builds you've got the night light which gives you sort of a warmer tint and there are quite a few updates to install on this which i will do in a while and we'll run it with the fully updated latest version which i believe is 1709 you do get a few games that are included on this and once you've attached it to the internet either via the wi-fi or with the ethernet it will start to download those there is some potential to save more space by uninstalling software that you don't use 
Um, this particular installation is not too bad, but uh, there's um, a few extra bit of bloatware, as I would call it with the more recent one, such as, you know, paid Wi-Fi. You're not going to use that on this, so you might as well uninstall that. You can also use it in the tablet mode. So if you're using it as a media box, something like that, near to a TV, you don't have to just use it as a monitor. You might find that that would work better for you. You can also do things like install Kodi, etc. So it's quite flexible in that regard. Just going to display and the storage settings now. What I normally do is put on the storage sense so you'd be able to delete unnecessary files itself. But if you're a heavy media user, I would suggest either an external drive or an SD card in the unit and you can store apps and photos, videos, etc. on that. There's definitely enough storage with the 64 to get you going though. Personally, I prefer the dark theme, so I've just switched it over to that. And we'll see some of the downloads are ongoing with these. You can cancel some of them and uninstall the stuff that you don't need. It's not too much bloatware, to be honest. It's, it's perfectly okay. As far as the graphics goes, not too many options with this. You can adjust the display. This will support up to 4K. But you can also tweak a few settings if you are using it for games. This isn't really aimed at someone that's using games. But because a lot of people ask this question, will it run Minecraft? Just did a quick test with Minecraft just to see how that ran. Now I've kept this at the default settings, haven't changed anything. There's potential to maybe reduce the uh, view distance, etc., and turn a few down, but I've just wanted to see how it performed at the normal settings, and it actually worked quite well. I was fairly pleased with the frame rate. It was reasonably smooth and very playable, so you won't have any problems playing Minecraft on this straight out of the box with the normal settings. Now, if you're thinking about some of the high-res texture packs that you can get with Minecraft, obviously that's going to hit it much more, so that wouldn't really be an option with some of the packs. But it's perfectly okay for running games like Minecraft and possibly older games. It's not going to run some of the latest games because that's just going to be too much for it. Now, we're doing some benchmark tests. This particular one is Passmark. It just gives you an idea about the overall performance and it would come up with a few scores. So this will give us the scores on the processor and the memory and on the hard disk, etc. So the processor score is about in line with what you'd expect with the Atom. It's over the thousand mark and you can go over and have a look on the Passmark site and compare it to other processors. It's pretty similar to some of the older dual core desktop processors. This is my Wi-Fi test, good download speed, just under the 40 megabits. Uh, upload, a bit lower than normal, 8.5, but still within acceptable limits. And the speeds on the disk, good read speeds, uh, up to 150 or most. The write speeds were a little bit slower than the original B-Link, but I uh, didn't really notice any difference in terms of using them side by side. They're actually quite similar. This is just me playing around with some HD video, higher resolution, and seeing what impact it has on the processor see the processor I split it into the individual cores remember even though it's a quad core you can't compare this processor to a desktop processor it's not definitely not going to be as quick but it's certainly perfectly fine for high resolution video playback and doing normal tasks such as office and things like that but you can also play some light games as well perhaps the biggest difference for me though between this and the original is that you had only two gigabytes of RAM and the 64-bit operating system two gigs is minimum so with four gigabytes so even with a lot of tabs open and quite a few programs open as well i was still able to run that quite smoothly so you will definitely notice a difference between the original and this in terms of the available ram that's the by far the biggest difference the processor is only very slightly faster than the original z8 uh, 300 this is the z8 350 it's slightly quicker um, it's based on the same technology. It has slightly faster um, core speed depending on which cores it's using. And the graphics are a little bit better. Intel HD graphics are perfectly fine for doing some very basic gaming and the video playback. Um, but obviously it's, there's no way this is a powerhouse processor. They are better than the original Atoms by some margin that were originally on the uh, netbooks a few years ago. They're quite a bit quicker than that. You can see here I've inserted an SD card as well. We'll definitely recommend one of those if you have quite a bit of media uh, photos lying around just to give you that bit of extra storage space. And you can use this exactly as you would do a normal PC. You can attach other devices, external hard drives, uh, plug in webcams, also do things like attach printers and scanners. So you can use it as you would do a normal PC 
expand it via the USB ports and it could certainly do the job for some people. It really depends what your needs are. This is for basic computing, web browsing, email, you'd be able to watch video, media consumption, you'd be able to do a little bit of photo, basic photo work or video work, but you're not really going to be doing any heavy productivity with this because it just doesn't have the power to do that. So if you're into rendering, um, advanced video editing, you really need to be looking at higher end machines. You can get i3s and even i7 processors obviously at a higher cost from different makers. I'll just show you I've attached a printer and a scanner to this. But one advantage with this box compared to the Android boxes is the hardware compatibility. You can run a wide range of devices on a Windows computer. So it's certainly quite a decent machine overall. Just make sure that this fits your needs. If you have the original B-Link BT3, perhaps not a must-have upgrade, but that extra RAM could come in handy, particularly if you're using normal daily activities on a PC. It's actually quite a good little machine, particularly at the price point. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out some of my other video reviews, and I'll catch up with you soon.